And now, here he is, the one, the only... Whatever you're selling, I don't want any. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with uh, 1,500 smackolas tonight. It's a lot of money. That's Damon Runyon talk, smackolas. If any of them say this, uh, this is for any of our couples, you know, who are allegedly... Oh, did I say the secret place? <laughs> the secret way tonight is door, and the duck will come down, or the duck will go back, and we'll pay him $100 in cash. We have a housewife for you, Groucho. For me? Uh, oh, you shouldn't. <laughs> Uh, her name is Mrs. Helen Bright. And her I don't partner... care what her name is. Drag her out. Eh? <laughs> and uh, her I'm partner... Just crazy about housewives. <laughs> she has a partner I'd like to tell you about. Her, uh, Dr. Leonard Krauss. Is it right Sour Krauss? Huh? Say the secret word and you'll divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word. Something you find around the house, Krauss. Dr. Leonard Krauss and Mrs. Helen Bright, huh? Mrs. Bright, that's, that's you, I presume, yes. huh? Where are you from uh, originally, huh? Well, I was born in the Lying In Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. Oh? Mm -hmm. A couple of interns out front. Huh? A friend of mine. Yeah. Interns? No. What's, uh, you were married, I presume, huh? Since yes, you were born right. in the Lying In Hospital. No, that doesn't necessarily mean you're married, does it? No. Uh, after what I... sort of work does your husband do? Oh, he's a cabinet maker. And he makes um, cabinets and uh, shelves and drawers for the California bank. Oh, he makes drawers. I wish he'd make me a new pair. Huh? <laughs> Mine are ripped to shreds. <laughs> Dr. Krauss, uh, I suppose everybody calls you Sour Krauss, huh? Some of them do, sir. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the ones without a sense of humor. That's right. <clears throat> Well, now I know how we stand. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, let's uh, investigate you, shall we? Yes. Find out some things about you. Where are you uh, from, Mr. Krauss? Uh, uh, do you prefer being called doctor? Any way you prefer, Groucho. Well, I want you to be happy. I'm happy being in your company, Groucho. See? <clears throat> well, I wish I could say as much, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I'm deliriously happy. Just looking at a big, husky, healthy man like you, who seems to be so well coordinated psychologically, physically, and uh, every other way, I imagine. Uh, let's see. What kind of a doctor are you? Foot, horse, or general? I'm a doctor of medicine. I'll try that again. What kind of a doctor are you? Foot, horse, or general? I'm a doctor it of medicine. It was no good the first time, doctor. <laughs> You're a doctor of medicine? Yes, yeah, specializing in psychiatry. Oh, I didn't know. Did I get my foot on the couch? <laughs> you, well, sooner or later, I knew that uh, we were bound to get a psychiatrist who would be interested in this show here. Huh? <laughs> in the last eight years, we must have sent a lot of business your way, Doctor. <laughs> and I'm sure we've had a lot of your patients on our show. <laughs> well, Doc, when you make a house call, do you, do you have to carry your couch on your back, or do you assume that there is a couch in each home? <laughs> As a matter of fact, a couch isn't at all an, a necessary piece of furniture in the... Uh, well, it's always psychiatry. associated, though, with the psychiatrist and the analyst. That's right. Uh -huh. Well, now, look, Doctor, recently yes. we've been having a little problem with my Uncle Julius. I have an Uncle Julius that lives in New York. He thinks he's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it didn't bother us so much when he thought he was an Underwood typewriter, but, uh, but this worries me. Now, what would you suggest? Well, uh... Actually, the, this facetious question... Uh, no, it isn't. Sometimes he thinks he's a box of raisins. <laughs> you ordinarily require a facetious answer, Groucho, but uh, actually there are psychiatric situations in which uh, persons who suffer from these schizophrenic delusions in uh, which they... That's a split personality. Huh? Yes, yeah, something like that. I mean, I, he could go to Chicago and the rest of them could go to St. Paul. And they, huh? That's right, in which case you would need a sort of a sectional couch to treat him. <laughs> Look, uh, why don't you sit here and I'll stand? <laughs> if you thought, think that one jest is going to push me out of this job, you've got another thing. <laughs> well, Doctor, as long as we're talking about analysis, uh, how about taking a crack at me? Oh, brother. <laughs> what I'm letting myself in for, huh? Well, Groucho, I... Uh, it's a living, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> since this is a free analysis, I can't go too deeply. <laughs> No. 
maybe you'll pay me, huh? I would suggest offhand, though, that uh, fundamentally, uh, you're a very kind-hearted, soft-hearted person who, ex uh, who compensates for his soft-heartedness by uh, his aggressive verbalisms. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can find that out on those, on those cookies you get in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> This, uh, You've only scratched the surface, Doc. This results, dig deeper, Doc. Dig deep. This results, Mr. Marx, in what is known as an inferiority complex. Notice the distinction between the inferiority and the inferiority yes. complex. Would you She's mind amplifying that? She's, uh, <laughs> I've noticed in your tendencies towards... Uh, I've, 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 I've watched you on these programs quite frequently. I, uh, I enjoy this program about the best of all the television programs. Thank you, Doctor. I enjoy your analysis better than any... <laughs> I've ever had Freud, Jung, Brill, or any of the boys. Well, I, this has been very interesting and, and quite revealing. And I would love to go continue to talk to you two, but the time has come for them to take me away. No, I... <laughs> the time has come to play your bet your life, the walrus said. Now, we start you off with $100. Uh, you know, you selected a dictionary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you can start with $10, $20, $50, all the way to $100. And this is Mr. Fenneman, who so also could use a deep analysis. <laughs> now, what do you want to start with? 20, 40, 50, 100? 100 dollars. 100? Technically, a ream of paper has 480 sheets. What do you call the package of paper that has 24 sheets? Talk it over. Well, try it. The only thing I can think of is a block. That's a psychological block, you mean, huh? <laughs> no, it's a choir. U-U-I-R-E. I used to sing in one of those when I was a kid. You still have $50. We'll try it for the 90. I, I wish you wouldn't talk when I'm interrupting you. Huh? <laughs> now, what are you going to go for? $90. Cash. What do you call the hiding place used by hunters and trappers for concealing and preserving provisions that are inconvenient to carry? Uh, cash. Cash or cash. Cash and carry, we call it, huh? You now have $140. Now what are you going to go for? The uh, 80. What do you call the formations in a cave, conical or cylindrical in shape, that rise from the ground? Oh, dear. Okay. Cave. Stalagmite? Stalagmite is right. You now have $220. What are you going to go for? Seventy. Seventy. What do you? What is a thespian? It's a, it's an actor. Mm -hmm. Ed, it's right. It's an actor. It is absolutely right. And you wind up with two hundred ninety dollars. Well, just before we went on the air, Groucho, our studio audience selected a lady with an interesting hobby. She's Mrs. Mary Brandvig. Her partner is a special guest, Mr. Howard Hill. Folks, you come in, please, and meet. Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find the house. Ow. Howard Hill, huh? It's a pleasure to have you here, Howard. Glad to be here, sir. Well, I'm always glad to have you here. Thank you. He's one of the greatest archers since William Tell, you say. <laughs> Mrs. Brandy, uh, Mary Brandywine, huh? Brand Vig. Brand Vig? Oh, I... Well, let's get acquainted with you, uh, Mary. Are you, you married? Well, <laughs> I'm Mrs. Brandvig. Answer my question. <laughs> there are many misses running around looking for a new husband. <laughs> You're still looking for the old one, huh? <laughs> now, Fenneman says you were chosen because of your hobby. Uh, what is your hobby? Oh, I'm a radio ham. I'm a member of the... Uh, I'm a radio ham, too, but uh, what is your hobby? For sure. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm also a, a television ham. I am a member of the Los Angeles Young Ladies Radio Club, affiliated with the uh, national organization, the Young Ladies Radio League. Well, what's the purpose of this? Well, we try to have uh, some purpose besides fun. We uh, are always on hand for emergencies. Could, what are you, I, could what? I interrupt there just a moment? Well, I certainly don't object to you interrupting, uh, Howard. Uh, she's speaking of uh, helping people or trying to. Uh, some time ago, about four years, five years ago, I was down in 
Asuncion Bay in the Gulf of California. We had a boy on a boat with appendicitis and one of these radio hams, as she called it, a shortwave, picked up the message and delivered it, so we got help down there. So they do help people. Well, you better give her a big kiss. I'll have them married before the show's over. Yeah. Well, Howard, let's talk about your bows and arrows. How many movies uh, have you worked in, approximately? I worked in about 12 or 15 feature pictures for the various studios. Then I made, uh, produced about... Well, what are you? Are you disguised as an Indian in these pictures? Well, sometimes. I've been as many as four Indians in one picture. <laughs> How do you do that? You get killed and then they put... Well, yeah, they just take the hair off of you and put on a scalp lock or a feather and you're another Indian. So what is the toughest shot you ever made with a, a bow and arrow? Well, I think uh, probably the toughest shot I ever made was a double ricochet. Now, they're nice. And I broke a balloon past the You can hardly get one of those anymore. <laughs> what is this, Howard? A uh, double ricochet was where I had a bullseye on a clock arm and it come over in front of the bullseye. Now what I had to do, I had to shoot this board, hit this board, glance off it, hit another board, and then get the bullseye, I mean the balloon just as it crossed the bullseye. Now the shot isn't too tough. No, it sounds pretty simple. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to do it as soon as I get through here, if I can get a bull. But what you have to do is to watch the balloon that's moving with one eye and watch the spot on the board that you got the hit with the other eye and time it so that you get the error off in time to get this board off on the next board, then get the balloon just as it passes because it's only have a split second. I see. In other words, you have to have a split personality, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, haven't you taken some pictures in Africa, hunting with a bow and arrow? Yes, I made a feature picture down there called Timbo. It's a full-length feature in color. You just about hunted everything on four legs, haven't you? Yes. Well, what's the toughest animal to bag with a bow and arrow? The guy next door who builds things all night in his garage? No, sir, I think an elephant is the toughest thing to shoot with any kind of a weapon, whether it be a bow and arrow or not. But, of course, you can't stop him with a bow. If somebody's not there to shoot him with a rifle, they're going to have some loud singing and slow marching. <laughs> If an elephant was coming at me, uh, I know what I'd do. I'd take four aspirins, pull the covers over my head, and holler for Jack Webb. <laughs> well, it's been a very interesting experience talking to you two, but uh, let's see if you can win some money now. Eh? In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $290, and the secret word is door. You selected the animal kingdom for your category, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? The easy questions are small sums. The big questions are, hard, are big sums. Ninety. Ninety? Uh, to, what a, to what better known animal is the wallaby related? Kangaroo. That's right, kangaroo. You now have $190. Eighty? Eighty? If a cow belongs to the bovine family, what kind of animals belong to the porcine family? P-O-R-C-I-N-E. Well, hogs? Yeah, that's okay. We call them pigs where I come from. Now I have $270. Is there any difference between a pig and a hog, uh, Howard? Well, the difference is a, a pig is an old hog's little boy. <laughs> well, that's, that's certainly framing it delicately. <laughs> Now what are you going to go for? <laughs> Seventy. Seventy. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Fine. Uh, a peacock is the male of the species. What is the female called? What do you think? Uh, well, if it's a, if a male is a peacock, then the female must be a hen. So a it would be a peahen. Peahen. Can you believe that's right? Yeah. Peahen. <laughs> well, you're all right. Now I have three hundred forty dollars. Now what are you going to go for? Is your last chance to beat the other couples? Sixty. All right, what kind of an animal is a schnauzer? A dog. A dog is correct. And you wind up with four hundred dollars. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Sims, would you come in please and meet Groucho Marx? Say the secret word and you'll divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. Jack Sims. 
You're a nice-looking young couple, and I, uh, you look reasonably happy, and I assume you're married. <laughs> Boy, am I shrewd, huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Jack? I'm from Santa Monica, Groucho. I'm a native son. Oh, naked son, huh? And Mrs. Sims, uh, what is your first name? I don't... Desiree. Oh, Desiree. <laughs> How do you spell it, then? D-E-S-I-R-E-E, -E, with an acute accent over the E's. Well, you have a very cute accent over the E's. <laughs> and the eyes aren't bad either. <laughs> How old are you, Jack? I'm 29, Russell. 29. Uh, and you, uh, Desiree? I'm 20. 20. What sort of work do you do, Jack? Uh, I'm a real estate salesman, Groucho, with uh, J.R. Oh. Sims and my father in Santa Monica. Oh, so you did all right. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, uh, since you're still uh, comparative newlyweds, could you tell us something about your romance? Just the highlights will do for now. Well, we, uh, we met in March, and we were engaged in April, mm -hmm. and we were married in July. Mm -hmm. That's about as romantic as an inventory in a stone quarry. <laughs> well, how did uh, Desiree, how did he propose? Did he get down on one knee and say, baby, or my cup of tea? No, he, we went to Rosie McGard's uh, hangover in Hollywood. It's a nightclub and... I beg your pardon. It's called, it's, it's called the hangover. The music was playing so loud, I, I couldn't hear anything. I... He was talking to you and you didn't hear a word he said? Well, I knew he was very much interested in me, and I could see him sort of working, working up to the point of proposing, and I, I didn't take any chances. I said yes, whether I could hear him or not. <laughs> Kid, you were taking an awful chance. <laughs> Well, Desiree, how did you break the news to your father that uh, he was losing his daughter? Did you say, look, I've got a live one? <laughs> no, Jack went over to my father, and in the old-fashioned way, he asked for my hand mm -hmm. in marriage. And what'd your father say? Take all of it, kid, I've had a long enough. Huh? <laughs> no, he was very proud and very pleased and very happy with the... And relieved, I assume. <laughs> This is no reflection on your charms, Desiree. You're a very attractive girl, but I think all parents are relieved when they get rid of their children. <laughs> well, Desiree, what are your plans for the future? Well, I'm expecting a child. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, you could have you knocked me over with a father. <laughs> oh. Congratulations, Desiree. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very happy for both of you. Do you have a, a name picked for this infant? Well, we have um, Mark. You call him uh, Lazy Magari or whatever name? <laughs> Rosie Magari. Rosie Magari? No. We like Mark Price and Tim. What about Half Price? That would be a nice <laughs> thing. I mean, you got a small baby. <laughs> well, Jack, uh, are you prepared to assume the responsibilities that uh, inevitably go with fatherhood? Well, yes. I really don't know much about babies, but uh, I'm prepared. Well, that makes you even. Babies don't know much about fathers. <laughs> Luckily, the children are pretty rugged and can take most anything. You intend to find out more about uh, babies before the uh, eventful day? Well, I, I've been uh, reading books on... We've been going to Red Cross meetings and... Uh, mm -hmm. You don't go to Magari's anymore. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. <laughs> then I practice on droodles and... Uh, what I said? That's our French poodle. <laughs> well, how do you practice on a French poodle? I mean, is the SPC aware of this? Well, uh... Uh, you hold the, the, the dog over your shoulder and <laughs> like you do a baby, you know. Mm -hmm. Doesn't you... the tail get in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, it <laughs> doesn't seem to bother. Well, you're a very nice young American representative couple, and I'm sure you have many years of happiness ahead of you. <clears throat> now let's play You Bet Your Life, and uh, I assume you both understand how to play this game. Yes. Yeah.
In the race for the $1,500, the second couple is leading with $400. Now, what are you going to start with? This is a spelling quiz. $100. I want you to pronounce the word, spell it, and then pronounce it again. For $100, you're going to start with. Okay. S spell the word fuchsia, meaning a plant with red, pink, white, or purple drooping four-petal flowers. Pronounce it. Fuchsia. Spell it. Fuchsia. Fuchsia. F-U-S-H-I-A. No. No, it's F-U-C-H-S-I-A. Well, you still have half your hundred, you have fifty dollars. All right, don't get, uh, don't get discouraged. Now, what are you going to go for? Ninety, thirty, fifty? Seventy dollars. Seventy. Spell the word giraffe, meaning a long-necked animal. Go ahead. Giraffe. G-I-R-A-F-F-E. You are absolutely right. Good. You now have $120. Now what are you going to go for? $80. $80. $80. Spell the word supersede, meaning to take the place of, as by reason of superior word, to replace a plant. Supersede. S U P. C E D E. I don't know if that's the one or if it's C E D E. C one or two. C. Super C. S U P E R C E D E. No, you blew one letter. It's S U P E R S E D E. But almost everybody goes off on that. <laughs> I'm but sorry, but you now have sixty dollars. All right, now you still got another chance. What are you going to go for? Sixty. Ninety. Ninety dollars. Ninety. Spell the word rarify, meaning to make rare or less dense. R A R I F Y. Right. Go ahead. Rarify. R A R I F Y. Now you spent too much time in Mother Magari's. Where <laughs> it's R A R E F Y. Oh, I'm sorry. These are all tricky words. I'm sorry that you, you didn't... wind up with thirty dollars. Well, that's a shame. I'm sorry you didn't win more, but look what you've got coming in a few months. Huh? That's right. That's right. Thank you. Well, all right, I'll give you, here we go, for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and no help in the audience. In 1066, William of Normandy defeated King Harold II of England in one of the most decisive battles in history. For $1,500, what was this historic battle called? What's the answer you two have decided upon? The Battle of Orange. No, it's uh, <laughs> Hastings. Hastings and Agincourt. I'll start to say Agincourt. I must have. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, they lost the big money. How much they win the quiz, George? Uh, $400 in the quiz. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations and Thank thanks you. to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight.